incidents and characters in this story might be completely fictitious. And any resemblance to you or me might be purely coincidental. Where should I start? The name of the town? It's a town. It's got houses and stores and churches and schools. 90 minutes on the freeway to the big city. You'd never know it, would you? Main Street. Don't believe me. Here's the sign. Dress shop. Antiques. Shoe store. Holloway's. Porter's first store. He's got five others now. They breed like rabbits and make about the same social contribution. George Phipps teaches here. If you try to remember the names, don't bother. You'll meet them all in good time. Surprise. Culture. It's Saturday. The first Saturday in May. Trout are snapping, golf balls are clicking, daffodils are blooming, and if you're Brad Bishop, your daddy was rich. Brad's family owned the place before he was born. Now it's his. It's a good house. Traditional foundation, gracious, not too formal, well built with an unexpected turn here and there. I'm talking about Brad. He gave me my first black eye right here under the stairs. We were 12. He gave me my first kiss, too. We were older. Dad. Deborah. Two years ago, Brad went off to Mill Creek, Utah for a week of skiing. He came back six months later with a half-healed spiral fracture and a wife. Most people would have settled for one or the other. Well, you know how it is. You're far away from home, a lonely hospital room, in comes a pretty nurse, and what do they say? A uniform can leap social barriers in a single bound. All right, Mr. Bishop, I'll take care of it. Was it a very antique, antique? No, 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 don't tell me. Uh, bury it out back and I'll dig it up at midnight and I'll try crazy. Did it belong to Brad's mother? No, no, no. Don't tell me that either. Tomas will carry those to the car. He can get the relish. It's in a can in the back. It must weigh about 15 pounds. Tell him to lift from the bottom, or he'll end up with a hernia. Oh. I forgot to wake him. promise we'll die together. We'll drive over a cliff together when we're 90 years old. We'll be buried side by side. A mysterious red rose will pop up from our grave in the form of a candy sampler. And Ripley's, believe it or not, will pay millions for the rights of our story. You <laughs> <laughs> used to like making love before, Brad. It's late. Well, this will just take me. <laughs> You got me confused with the other guy. What's his name? The chicken farmer. <laughs> Wilfred. And he was the mailman. Uh-huh. <laughs> you sorry you didn't marry him? Are you? He was my type. table 
as you come in. The Ming Dynasty vase. The pink Ming Dynasty vase, the one signed by Emperor Ming. Oh, Lord. Brad, I... <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Ming. You're gonna miss your boat. <laughs> Open it. <laughs> what if you hadn't broken your leg? It frightens me sometimes, really. I'm serious. I mean, what if, you, what if you'd stuck to the bunny hill where you belonged? We'd never have met. You ever think of that? Uh, never. Open your present. Mm. Mm. You'd have skied right out of Mill Creek, back here and into the arms of Miss Rice. Would you open your present, Miss <laughs> Rice? Uh, when I count my blessings, I always include your spiral fresh. You like it? Who wouldn't? It's stunning. You know, I was driving down the street, I saw it in the window. And I said, that's Deb. I did a swift U-turn and a cop gave me a ticket. I'm sorry that you got a ticket. Don't leave it out. Kate can press it from where tonight. Tonight? Yeah. The club, the dinner dance. Hello. Oh. Oh, thank you. Uh, Kate, would you, uh, ask Tomas to put my overnight bag in the car? I'm gonna take the convertible. Yeah, the meeting in San Carlos. I told you about it. You didn't say anything about staying overnight. Well, you never know. The bag's just in case. Don't worry, I'll call you. Well, if I'm at the picnic, can you call back? I'll leave a message with Kate. Please call back after six. You're gonna be at the club. I won't go without you. Why not? I don't mind. George and Rita are going to drop by. Well, I mind. Oh, let me come to San Carlos with you. I'll sit in a corner. I won't say a word. I'll, I'll disguise myself as a pole lamp. Deb, there's nothing to do in San Carlos. Look, if you don't want to go to the club tonight, don't go. That's all. Stupid conversation, you're gonna be late. Rita went to a lot of trouble to get you into the junior league. You bought me this dress. What's wrong with that? I thought you'd look beautiful in it. Why? Because Addie Ross looked beautiful in it at Mrs. Hanley's fundraiser last month. Wait a minute. It's the same dress. Dad. I'm late for the picnic. Women. Now, this is a street where people on the way up and on the way down live alongside each other for a while. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Shannon. Rita and George Phipps are on their way up, if Rita has anything to say about it. But, and she well, does. How short are we? All right, I'll hold. All right. Oh, oh, no. Sadie? Sadie? Hello, sweetheart. Sadie! The, the, the baby. He wanted out. Watch your staff. You talking to me? I'm on hold. Hang up. I can't. It's Frank. Oops. Um, yeah. Frank, no, that's all right. Look. Frank, it just doesn't make sense for, for Randolph to tell him about the merger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why can't you tell Polakoff that? Something. Wait a minute. What about a scene with uh, Jennifer and his mistress, huh? 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 
Well, just tell... Yeah, I want to get it shot. <coughs> get that out of your mouth. <coughs> Not you, the baby. Oh, what a coincidence. I didn't know you were trying to quit. Sadie! <sighs> what? Oh, oh wh whoa. Why by tonight? Where's he going? Can't you pouch it? Oh, damn it, Frank, all right. I said all right. I'm not upset. I'll write it. I think it's a stupid scene. I love you, too. Bye. Where is Sadie? More changes. More changes. Polakoff wants Randolph to tell his father about the merger. Why? Why would he do something so stupid? I don't know. Why would he? Because the network wants him to. Because Ted Polakoff thinks Randolph is weak. He's supposed to be weak, isn't he? He's supposed to be weak. <clears throat> what time did you come to bed last night? Or did you come to bed last night? I didn't look. Finished the rewrite? Yep, the typist should be coming for it. Well, she's not here. Oh, my God. If she's not here for it by uh, 10, would you um, call it, please? Well, you better tell Sadie I won't be here. Oh, going fishing, dear? Yeah, that's right. We gotta get home early from the club tonight. Frank wants me to watch his new series. Isn't it enough he interrupts breakfast? Does he have to cut into dinner, too? Those interruptions are paying for our new car. We didn't need a new car. According to you, there isn't anything we need, George. I just don't see why you have to work night and day to please what's-his-name. He's my executive producer, and you damn well know what his name is. I notice you don't mind driving the car. Now, Deborah's blaming herself and wishing she hadn't said anything. She'd like to turn around, go home, and apologize. But she doesn't dare keep the Junior League waiting. In just a little while, she's going to wish she had gone back. <laughs> she's going to wish it with all her heart. George off to so early. The call of the wild. He likes to capture large, smelly water animals and bring them home and lay out their entrails on the kitchen counter. Wish he'd take up tennis. Did he dress like that? Oh, they dress in Mill Creek for trout season. Not in a sport coat. That's right. His good blue one, too. In the 200 years I've known George, he's never missed the first day of trout season. Well, the world must be coming to an end, that's all. Oh, boy, I wish it would come to an end. I'd be spared rewriting the second act. You're not bringing your work on the picnic. If I could get this show done, there's a chance it might go to series. Series, from the old Latin word serioso, meaning lots and lots of money. No more writing episodes of Telegraph Hill. I'll scribble when the kids play ball. Addie pitches better than me anyway. Addie volunteered for this picnic? Yeah, children love her dogs, too. It's an unexplainable phenomenon, you know, like the Bermuda Triangle. I can't picture Addie playing baseball. Which is one of the first girls to get into Little League. Or fastball, of course. You know, I've just realized something. What? No matter how we start out, whatever we're talking about, we always end up on Addie Ross. If she knew, she'd be thrilled. You think I don't know? That's right. I'm Addie. The one they can't stop talking about. Addie doesn't care what anybody says about her as long as they say it. Preferably in neon letters a foot high. She's been like that since we were kids. Rita, my dearest friend. If you think you've got something to talk about now, just wait. <laughs> Is that too tight? No. 
He brought a letter also. A letter? Claire, I have that um, letter from Addie. It's addressed to all three of you. The three of us? And how diplomatic. We're in alphabetical order. Don't open it. Oh, come on. Don't you want to hear her excuse for the no-show? It's bound to be a beaut. Bet she broke a nail. Dearest friends. Oh. You know I hate goodbyes. As you read this, I'm on a plane heading east. I doubt we'll ever see each other again. I don't again. believe it. Just like that. Did she say something to you? Well, she sold her car last week. I asked her why she was selling a brand new that. car. I doubt we'll ever see each other again. This town has meant so much to me, I never want to forget it or the people in it. They say you never leave people you love, that you take a small piece of them with you wherever you go. And that's what I've done. I'm not going east alone. I've taken a husband, one of yours. <laughs> Telephones not made by AT&T are reporting some kind of complaint. When was the last time you had a complaint with an AT&T phone? If you've had it with second-class phones, buy an AT&T phone now and get up to $20 in free AT&T long-distance calling. I feel terrible. If I take Comtrex for this awful cold, will I also need Sudafed for my stuffy nose? All you need is Comtrex. That's all. Nothing else. My cold's miserable. I'm congested, achy, sneezing, coughing. Should I take Comtrex or Contact? Comtrex. That's all. Nothing else. Unlike these, all by itself, Comtrex multi-symptom cold reliever has medicine to relieve more cold symptoms. I feel a lot better now. Comtrex. That's all. Nothing else. From Bristol Myers. Come with me to a place you'll be glad that you did. Yeah, free. With so much more, oh, what a store with Toys R Us Kids. Guess what we want, Jeffrey? You want Cabbage Patch Kids, and everything Cabbage Patch is at Toys R Us. We've got the most Cabbage Patch Kids. Cabbage Patch Kids World Travelers. Collect them all. Wow. The Show Pony and Kid. The whole world of Coleco's Cabbage Patch Kids at out of this world prices. It's the world's biggest Toys R Us. I discovered a place where a whole town plays Santa Claus. It's the season of You're going to fix that? Sure. Time of real joy. Would you like some coffee? Mmm, that's good coffee. That's Maxwell House. Seems whenever coffee tastes this good, good to the last drop, it couldn't be anything but Maxwell House. It couldn't be anything but Maxwell House. What else could it be? All right, it's a sick joke. But consider the source. Addie's probably having lunch right now at Enrico's, chortling into her white wine over the thought of us sweating out a trip to Marshall Island. We'll come back with sugar bites and also she'll be on the dock with the mariachi band. Laura May said Addie sold this car. People sell cars, Deborah. Doesn't necessarily mean they leave town afterward. I think I'll get rid of these. She's pretty upset. Maybe she has good cause. You think it's Brad? That lets you and me off the hook, doesn't it?
can't go out this way. <laughs> You're darn right. You should wear a dress. Say I'm done in from the trip. I can meet your friends another night. They won't mind. George and Rita are so excited to meet my new bride. They can't even find the keyhole. Now, if I make them wait 24 hours longer, Rita is going to call out the National Guard. Thank you. You, uh, always chug a martini? Is Rita someone you used to date? No, Rita's always dated George. <laughs> they were probably betrothed in the womb. Oh, it's this haircut. It's the worst I've ever given myself. Go in town tomorrow and get it fixed. I'm sure Rita probably knows a good place. It looks fine. You don't think it looks fine. You think somebody Rita knows should fix it. I think I'm in love with you. I think you should put some clothes on, or I'm going to be tempted to show you how much. Mm. Mm. I wish you would. Mm. I wish you would, and we could just stay here and never go out, just us, like it was in Mill Creek. You, um, mm. better get dressed. You're going to be here any minute. Wait, 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 wait. What? What dress should I wear? Well, I think maybe... Uh, I guess I'd sweat buckets in the wool. Right. Why don't you wear the blue? Blue's fine. Uh, there's a hair dryer under the sink. You okay? George, he's the one who owns the department store? No, no. That's Porter Holloway. You'll meet him at the club. George is the assistant prof over at the college. And his wife writes a TV show. Right. Now kick me if I say something dumb, okay? Hard, so I'll be sure to feel I it. I know. These people are my best friends. I've known them all my life. There is nothing to be afraid of. <clears throat> Mountains. Mountains. More mountains. <clears throat> Aren't there any pictures of Deborah? He was flat on his bum when he met Deborah. He was drinking water from a glass straw when he met Deborah. He was master of the bedpan when uh, he met Deborah. Expect yeah. the man to operate an instamatic? Oh, oh, my, 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 boys, you take terrible <laughs> pictures, you know that? Thanks. I can't tell if this is a ski slope or the inside of someone's nose. I'm trying to see whether the shutter was working. <sighs> George, can you stop clowning around? You're going to smash some bric-a-brac or I'm something? I'm going to see what's keeping Deb the trip. Oh, let me go. Out. If she broke a zipper, what good are you, huh? <laughs> Race. After your age, George. Oh, yes, Mother. Yeah, let's go. End of the room. Now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! Oh, that, that's unfair. That's <laughs> unfair. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, how about you? Me? Did you marry your mother? Oh, don't get me wrong. I always liked your mother. In fact, I don't think I ever told you this, but in the seventh grade, I started having some very dicey dreams about the old girl. Oh, fact, say, one can thing I you see mine even today? Why the dark give me solace in my lonely lie. moments to... Anybody home? It's Rita Phipps. Are you in there? Hello? Rita Phipps. Do you like Deborah, Debbie, Deb, or none of the above? I don't... It, it doesn't matter. What, whatever you want. My dad still calls me D.B. from when my brother was two, and he couldn't say my name. Of course, at the hospital, it was Deborah, unless they want you statin, then it's just nurse. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I just... Came up to realign myself. If uh, we don't get to the club soon, there won't be any escargot left. Your husband will wither and die. Did you know he was an addict? I'm not going. I, I have an awful stomachache. You're supposed to say headache. It's a more genteel excuse. But you can't get out of this. 
You're the main attraction. <laughs> Nobody's talked about anything else since we got Brad's telegram. The mm. Holloways are already at, at the... Is there really a wife up there? Are you having us on? Louis Armstrong or Louis Armstrong? I never figured you for love at first sight. It wasn't first sight. Ah, the sponge bath then. Don't tease her, Elmo. She's got the jitters. Ah, new bride, new house, new people. Why shouldn't she have the jitters? Stuck with you through sickness and poverty. Ah, uh, oh. I don't think she's after your month. <laughs> Talent? How could you run off and get married without bringing her home for your loved ones to pry and poke? You hit the nail on the head. You're really married, Elmo. Yeah, it looks like it. Was it loneliness? Biological time clock ticking? A primitive urge for an heir? Farmer with a shotgun? Don't I look like a man in love? Yeah, but I thought it was Addie. Kid stuff. the real thing. Just out of curiosity, how many have you had? Back home, we call it Dutch courage. What's wrong, huh? I'm wrong. This is wrong. I even come up with a wrong excuse. What am I doing here? I think you look very pretty in that outfit. I know. Turns heads every time I wear it to a church supper. I'm small town, Mrs. Porter. Phipps. I'm not stupid. Oh, no one's going to care about what you're wearing. They just want to meet Brad's new wife. Oh, here she is. Straight from the mountains of Mill Creek. Never been to Paris. Never even been to college. Isn't she a knockout? Isn't she witty? Is it any wonder Brad married her? We're not such awful snobs as you seem to think. At least I, I hope not. Did Brad tell you we got married in the hospital chapel? <laughs> we did it in such a hurry, you know. I said we should wait, but Brad... Well, I guess you know how he is. Once he makes his mind up, that's... that. The whole time we were saying our vows, I kept praying. Please, please don't ever let him be sorry. It was fine in Mill Creek. All of a sudden, everything's different. You'll get used to it here. In a hospital, there's... there's just two kinds of people. The ones who are sick, and the ones who take care of them. It's not a real world. I wish we could have stayed there. What do you people talk about? Years of growing up together, names of teachers, jokes I won't understand, dinner parties, dances, tennis. I love Brad so much. I don't want him to be sorry. Don't you know how scared I am? I'm so scared, I'm sick. <laughs> well, I can't turn a pumpkin into a horse-drawn carriage, but... Maybe. You're going to the ball, Cinderella. Take off that blouse. Now, uh, you take that belt you're wearing. What'd you pay for it? <laughs>
this spell? Yeah, they make, say, 20,000 of them. They give uh, 2,000 to Sachs, Neiman's, etc. Retails for about 50, 60 dollars. The Holloway's picks them up in the warehouse. I put them on the table for 20 dollars. Are you listening to me? I make a profit. Yeah. Customer gets a break. The only person that suffers is the poor slob who paid 60 bucks for it. <laughs> Mrs. Bishop and Mrs. Addie Ross. Congratulations on your wedding. Shall I open it? Uh, I'll take care of it, Freddie. Thank you. <laughs> Who's Mrs. Ross? Ross. Brad never told you about her? She's got style. You know, this bottle must cost $250. I never knew a lady who would do a thing like this. Is she here? Not while you're parked in her seat. She's too sporty for that. Her seat? I don't know. He's with the Foresters. You mean to tell me you dance with a man, you don't know his name? I forgot his name, okay? Don't mind my husband. He's not drunk. He's always a jackass. He grabs your knee, kick him. Oh, yeah? Well, we're going home. You go home. I'll take a cab. <laughs> you ask Cavalry to the rescue, sit down, Porter. The two of you should watch George and me. We never fight. Because Rita's never there to fight with. Maybe you should get a job. Oh, sit That's the ticket. We can both here. retire. Confidentially, Rita makes more with one script than Why I can earn in a semester. Well, I don't believe in a woman making more money than a man. Why not, Porter? Thinks up the marriage, that's why. No, <laughs> that's your cigar. Well, Laura May makes money the old-fashioned way. She <laughs> marries it. <laughs> hey, look, let, let's toast the bride. Where yeah. is that groom? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, you! Yeah! Let's cheer this man on, good people. It's only ten yards to you and me. But a marathon to a poor sot in a plaster cast. Don't quit. Now you can make it here, Elmo. You'll get what's left. <laughs> Elmo what? Don't tell her. You, George? Oh, no. Patty. She's here? Mm. Now, home in bed with the bug, I believe. Let's toast her. Let's toast the bug. I thought we were toasting the bride. Here's to Addie and her discriminating good taste in champagne and just about everything else. Nicely put. That's exactly what Addie has, discriminating good taste. Yeah, well, I could buy good taste. Addie has style. You're either born with it or you're not. She was born with it. Is this going to be a seminar on Addie Ross? <laughs> Is there a Mr. Ross? Divorced. <laughs> Brad. Hey, how are you? Good. You promised me a dance with your new bride. Well, I don't... No, honey, go ahead. I got my eye on you. You've <laughs> got to dance with the tennis pro. Right. You've you got to dance with the tennis pro so I can have the court on Sunday morning. <laughs> Please. Hi, Gina. Drink this. I am not above holding your nose and pouring it down your throat while you kick and scream. You're a sadist. I'm a mother. Come on, Dad. Get you up. know, this reminds me of the time I dressed Aunt Lacey. Oh, course. how lovely. Do go on. This bread. Did he leave the club? Without oh. you, he's right outside the door, wringing his hands, pacing up and down, wondering if you'll ever be able to forgive him. Forgive him? For making you dance with that pigeon-toed tennis jockey. Drink up. Mm. What is that? A new inner tube. I'm going to say... No. No, you're not. Mm. Drink. Oh. Good girl. Never eat at a place called Mom's, never play cards with a man named Doc, and never, never drink champagne sent by Addie Ross. Didn't they teach you anything at nursing school? What's wrong with Addie Ross? Not a damn thing. Porter said I was parked in her seat. Well, she and Brad used to 
see each other, that's all. See? Oh, that's good. That's pretty. I like that. What do your kids say when they have to pee? Back in high school, a million zillion years ago. Ouch. Ready? For what? For going back to the table and taking a bow. I fell flat on my face out there. You did? I didn't see that. Did you see that, Rita? Not me. Come on. Brad's pulling his hair out. Yeah, and the bishops tend to run bald as it is. Would you just tell him I'm okay? Why don't you tell him? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh! I guess he must have gone back to the table. Oh, there he is. Well, Addie got here after all. for woman. You can feel its oriental musk mystery. After midnight, there is no innocence. Midnight. Tonight. I can bring on the bacon. Fry it up in a pan. And never let you forget your romance. Oh, I wish I had a picture. I'm too scared to take pictures. But I'm not smart enough. Anyone can take great pictures with Minolta's 35mm autofocus compacts. Minolta Freedom 2 for decision-free pictures. And Minolta Talker for words of wisdom. Too dark, use flash. Both are autofocus, auto everything. Hey, Dorothy. Minolta Freedom 2 and Talker autofocus wizardry. Only from the mind of Minolta. Del Monte asked three people with a taste for something different and exciting which drink has the blend of flavors they've been looking for. Del Monte, pineapple grapefruit. Del Monte, pineapple orange. Del Monte, pineapple mandarin. Introducing new Del Monte pineapple blends with 50% juice and 100% great taste anytime. Del Monte pineapple blends. It's the sensible alternative. Excite me for Christmas. Who but Zales could bring such thrills to diamond fashion rings in both design and price? More shimmer in quarter carat style than $299 buys anywhere else. More sparks in half carats for $5.49. More sizzle in full carats for $8.99. Christmas excitement from Zales Jewelers, leading with style. Zales, I'm dazzled. NBC Monday Night at the Movies will continue following these messages. Tuesday, what does the A-Team do when the mob takes Santa's toys? Pull all the wheels off the little trucks. And on Riptide... How am I supposed to tell him? Nick's special mission exposes an army cover-up. He's alive. And on Remington Steel... We're being held prisoner by a bunch of Santas. You got it, pretty face. Tuesday. It seems suddenly to be everywhere. The movement against the artificially high price of watches. A revolution that has spread to over 50 million wrists. Armatron. Watches so beautifully made, so incredibly priced, it has quietly become the second largest watch company in America. Armatron. The revolutionary movement in watches. Employees at the Memphis Packing Company get the dreaded word details at 10. We continue with A Letter to Three Wives, starring Lonnie Anderson, Stephanie Zimbalist, and Michelle Lee.
Will I still play the violin? Debbie, hold on to that. Honey, Addie's been divorced for five years. If Brad wanted her, he had his chance. I and mean, he, he wouldn't wait until now. It just doesn't make sense, you know? Stop patting me on the head, poor Debbie. Maybe it isn't poor Debbie, so quit feeling sorry for me. Maybe I should start feeling sorry for you. Hey, wait a minute. I'm just... Was I'm George just... going fishing in his good blue jacket? Of course he wasn't. So where did he go? You don't know, do you? He can you? fish in his pajamas. It's none of your damn business. All right? Hey, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Listen to us. Pretty soon we'll be pulling hair. I'd have just loved that. Yeah. I guess she would. I'll kill myself before I do something Addie would love. If that starts to swell. In a concord. I can't say those names. Can you say bread line? I am his parent's sister. And don't tell me you're about I always mom. bake him a chocolate it's cake a on his birthday. Well, this is a very special birthday. Don't I've got something for George that's a hundred times better than chocolate cake. Yeah, and well, I make mine from scratch. Here. Courage are done through the church. Oh. Well, you, you could give me the name of the lawyer then, sister, couldn't you? Could you please? We don't supply the lawyer of the family. <gasps> oh. And quite frankly, 22 years is a long time. We don't have the facilities for maintaining records. They she didn't. Long. I doubt if I could help you, even if I wanted to. Turn off the life support system. Yeah, I met with Anderson this morning. Out here. Don't you want to hear what he said? What did he say? George, this is Spanish. See, si. You think a couple of network executives will know the difference? So you will if they can read. Then we've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> George, I wanted French champagne. What? Ah, for your beloved's birthday or because you've invited the Hollywood too? Both. Well, it's funny not to be the guest of honor at your own birthday party. Don't start, George. I hope I can keep them straight. Let's see. Dopey is president of Current Programming, and Grumpy, he's the one who's always phoning during meals. Frank is the executive producer on Telegraph Hill. He created The Inheritors. Do you know how much money he makes in a year? You have any idea how much Jesse James earned in a year? And that was before income tax. When I say French, I mean French. I'm paying for it.
you're right. My apologies. I'll take them back. George. Just do me a favor. Don't get on, on the soapbox tonight, okay? Are you telling me to stay clear of politics yes. and religion? you know what I'm telling you. I wouldn't you. dream of discussing television Good. or any other national tragedy at oh, a party. Oh, thank you. That's a perfect example. Rita. George, look. Half of this business is who you know and who your friends are. Frank says he makes more deals at, at parties than he does at, at his office. Maybe he should put some salmon canapes on his desk. Oh, to hell no. with this. Let's uh, lock up and not answer the door. We'll, we'll drink Spanish champagne, play with our kids get in bed and feed each other chocolate cake. There isn't chocolate cake. I ordered croque en bouche. I'll get it. Express Courier. Oh, in the name of heaven, where did she find this? I don't suppose there's a shortage of record shops in New York City? Hauser conducting. Frederica Kinski singing a solo. There couldn't be more than a few hundred of these still floating around. Cut in Vienna just after the war. And he's amazing, just the fact that she remembered. Did you ask her to get it for you? Well, of course not. I, I, I suppose we were discussing opera once, and uh, I mentioned it. Come on upstairs. I'll play it for you. Because when I asked you what you wanted this year, you said there wasn't anything. There wasn't. There isn't. Coming? You know, I could use some help down here. I'm not making this party for myself. attention just for a minute. I'd like to introduce you to Ted Polakoff and Frank Elkin. Sometimes I wonder how I dare do my job when you think of the power of television. This is the greatest cultural influence in America today. You know, originally I was interested in politics. That doesn't surprise me. I went on the campaign trail with McGovern in 72. I ran myself ragged and then I realized something. Politics doesn't shape this country. It's a little 12-inch black and white in a motel room on Route 1. And every time I make a decision about a show, I ask myself, what is this saying to the American people? Because that's where my responsibility lies. They're bringing out the cake now. Watch, watch. Yes, uh, 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 a comic book. Watch this. We've been married for 20 years, man. Somewhere in all of that this time. This is soap opera you produced? Serialized drama. Dude. Over coffee one morning Pardon while I was shaving French. or during the drive-by? Well, 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 then why the hell didn't you? Yes. Are you uh, in the television business, too? No. <laughs> There's no sense arguing with Ted now. Well, what we want is a film commitment for the pilot. But and inner city is depressing. Well, I understand that, but these women are social workers. What, what if Evelyn wins a trip to Vegas? That would open up the first two acts. We've been looking for a vehicle for Denise Lane. Frank says your play is right for her. Oh, he must have it mixed up with something else. It's about three men. Well, it's not written in stone, is it? This is 
a simple matter. Look, Eddie, with one slip of my eraser, your client won't have to worry about our dialogue in the next episode. Would you need the phone? I just have a few more calls. Eddie, it's a simple matter. Hey, Harriet. That's not bad to see that I'm alive. That's right. Harriet, I told you he was alive. Yeah. That's why I wear my suit. Like you know? reading that, those tabloids? I love your wife. She loves you, too. I'm going to get you kids a large Mitsubishi for the bedroom. Well, thanks, but we don't want one. How old are your girls? Our girls are boys. Well, how's the whole family going to gather around that little box in the kitchen? With great difficulty, I hope. <laughs> Oh, I read your play. We'll talk. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. What we want is something with an edge, something sexy, something Monday night, and a title that says it all. That's all I ask. I don't think the kids should have parents who survive the concentration camps. I think the parents should all be dead. We have to see them. It's a downer. I agree. And it should be set in the 80s. 80s? Oh, yeah, yeah, to make it more accessible. They could be uh, the grandchildren of the dead people. Rita. Rita, sweetie, come here. Hi. We were just discussing George's play. Oh, you read Stolen Children. <laughs> Ted thinks it's a vehicle for Denise. Are you serious? Would you excuse me? I have to see to my other guests. George? Oh, George? Donnie, is that, is that all you can say? Yeah. Oh, George. Go on. George. Do you really think I'd hand over stolen children to be ground up and spit out on prime time as a vehicle for a woman whose greatest attributes are blue eyes and nice buttocks? Please, George. It's all right. I understand what he's saying. I once wanted to write, but I couldn't stick it out. So I have the utmost respect for people who can do it. I respect you, George. But let me ask you this. On television, your play can be seen by millions of people in one night. Isn't that inviting? Millions of people get cancer every year. Is that inviting? Let's not confuse the issue. I never pretended to be out to cure cancer. I'm in the entertainment business. Well, George knows that. You're in the business of making whatever bilge will sell the most cat litter to the most people in a 30-second spot. Anything else is incidental, so don't say you're out to entertain or change the shape of the world. Hitler was out to change the shape of the world. You're much more dangerous. You don't have a point of view. You're not immoral, you're mindless. You just want bigger numbers than the next guy. You don't care what you have to do. Smash cars, rape women, Pratt Falls murder, whatever it takes, it's all the same. And then you blame it on the public, like a dealer blaming the junkie. You're in the noise-making business, fellas. You make so much noise that people can't hear themselves talk. And after a while, they can't hear themselves think. They'll soon be as mindless and as dangerous as you are, an amoral nation of cat litter customers. That's the business you're in. for morning. The Procon bush was swell. You couldn't let it slide, could you? I have often regretted my speech, never my silence. an apology. That was another pompous quote from another pompous poet. Publilius. I don't care who he was. He's dead. Nobody gives two pins about Publicus. Don't you ever take a vacation. It must be an awful strain to be God's gift to the teaching profession all day, every day, 
24 hours a day. What exactly do you want me to be? I gave Frank your play. I asked him to read it. Rita. He liked it. He's got three pay or play deals at the network. There's not a chance in the world he won't want to option it now. Thank God. I am so sick and tired of your nobility and your wisdom and your precious human values and your utter contempt for anyone who isn't you. I sit in that stinking laundry room every night till 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm not frank. I don't fool myself. I know what I'm writing, and guess what? I don't care. I take the check out of the drawer where I can see it, and I say, zippity doo dah and I keep on talking. What about you and me? You look at that check, and you say, zippity doo dah about us? We never see each other anymore. Doesn't that bother you? The minute the kids are in bed, you lock yourself away with Frank's notes, Ted's suggestions. First it was episodes of Telegraph Hill. Now it's this new show of yours. I wish it were another man. Why? So you wouldn't feel guilty? Then I'd know how to compete. Oh, I don't know how to compete. If I'm not what you want, you can go to hell. You're not what I want. If music be the food of love, play on. Love, Hattie. Wasn't I supposed to see the note? That's Shakespeare from Twelfth Night. Isn't it wonderful that you and Addie speak the same language since the rest of us are just making noise? Rita! Sit down. I said sit down. What for are you going to tell me the truth? and working your butt off for what? What the hell is money if all the rest falls by the wayside? Don't ever think I don't want you to earn a buck. We're a team, and if my ego pinches a little because you're pulling more weight, well, that's, that's, that's fine, let it pinch. A marriage is two people supporting each other with something else besides dollars. But you won't let me give you anything. You don't have time for anything. You're driving yourself, doing the work of six people, catering to the whims of a couple of idiots. And look at us, you're standing there asking me if I'm cheating on you. Tell me something, Ray. Are you going for good? JCPenney holiday sale. And we got something to help my mother in the kitchen. A cook. A microwave on sale. And for Jennifer? Mm, beautiful robes. She'll love them. On sale? I love them already. And blankets for the twins. Great. Now they'll never get out of bed. Oh, they will for their new Fox Sportswear. So, what do you get me? Gift wrap. Better get busy. Uh -huh. The JCPenney holiday sale. Hurry before it's all wrapped up. <laughs> So dear to me, cooks up deliciously, baked in lasagna, perfect on pasta, melted atop my veal, primo on any meal, pizza, gnocchi, and cannoli, so good with real cheese. Make your meal sing with real cheese. When the gods want to banish you, they answer your prayers. A woman who wouldn't be owned. Why is your freedom more important than mine? It isn't. A man who couldn't be tamed. When did you learn to fly? Yesterday. A world of beauty and danger that would take them to the limits. Robert Redford, Meryl Streep, in a Sidney Pollock film, Out of Africa, rated PG.
Starts Wednesday in select areas. Check newspapers. You're a part of me. You've been a catch out. Touch the heart of me. You've been a catch out. Every single day in every way. I feel how much you are a part of me. Your cat's a big part of your life, so make Purina Cat Chow brand cat food part of his life. It's all the nutrition cats need to help them live healthier, happier lives. What's more, veterinarians recommend it most. Purina Cat Chow, part of a healthier, happier life. NBC Monday Night at the Movies will continue following these messages. Wednesday on Highway to Heaven. You, you can't cut me off. I need the stuff. Can Jonathan and Mark save an addicted superstar? Look at yourself, man. Don't you just love it when they tell you... Anheuser-Busch. Here is Jennifer McLogan, NBC News. Good evening. It was a sad and somber journey for President Reagan as he went to Fort Campbell, Kentucky today to honor the 248 soldiers killed in last week's plane crash. The president told the families of the victims that the men and women we mourn were peacemakers. They were on their way home for Christmas from a peacekeeping mission in Egypt. In Colorado, at least two people were killed, 18 others injured, as a gas explosion demolished an office building. The search continues for 10 others listed as missing. Now this. You know, partying with good friends makes for a good time. But it takes good sense, too. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. The United States called tonight for an urgent meeting of the UN Security Council to deal with the problem of seizing hostages. I'm Jennifer McLogan in New York. More news later on this NBC station. Don't you just love it when they tell you a spread is buttery, then there's no butter in it? But Kraft Touch of Butter spread is different. Look, Kraft makes it with a touch of real butter. Yet Touch of Butter has half the calories of margarine and almost no cholesterol. Well, I figured I'd rather taste a touch of sweet creamery butter than any no butter spread. So I tried Touch of Butter. Mmm. Oh, yeah, I was right. Kraft Touch of Butter spread. Half the calories of margarine and a taste that begins with butter. If you're losing sleep worrying about getting all that last-minute Christmas shopping done, stop worrying. Zare is open 24 hours a day until Christmas Eve. And now, Zare is having their Christmas wrap-up sale, where specially selected gifts are 20 to 40% off. But time is running out, so get to Zare today, or tonight. Jerry Lee Lewis gets a George Klein tribute at 10. We continue with A Letter to Three Wives, starring Lonnie Anderson, Stephanie Zimbalist, and Michelle Lee. Oh, first thing I'm going to do when I get home is take a hot bath. First thing? I just want to check out the closets first, make sure nothing's missing. The letter was addressed to you too, lady. Mm, I know. So how do I know it's not Porter? I don't know. Then shut up. Then I don't care. If Porter has an itch for Addy, let the poor slob scratch it. Why should I bellyache? I've got what I want. Maybe you don't know what you want. You can't make whoopee with a checking account. Oh, romantic Rita. You know, sometime I'm going to take you on a tour of the Finney ancestral home. The whole tour. All three rooms and a walk around Ma's tomato patch. Then we'll talk about what keeps me warm at night. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hey, 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 oh, oh, hey. Break it up here, kids. Come on, come on. Come on, get up. Come on. Now, Mark, no pinching. Why can't you ever admit you love Porter? I know you do. I can smell it. What you're smelling is my perfume. hundred bucks an ounce. You like it? You're as crazy to get home as I am. You're dying inside. This one's ever just like me. i bet on it. You'd lose.
play cards. Oh. Huh? Will you me? please make her get out? Laura May, let your sister into the bathroom! Oh, honey, you oughtn't to walk around like that. You're catching pneumonia. Get your hands. I think it's disgusting. Porter Hall is 50 if he's a day. Oh, oh I wish oh, I was that disgusting oh. again. Ma says to get out! I got a date, too. A respectable date. Now, listen, your sister's a decent girl. There's nothing wrong with going out with the boss. It's a business date. You're looking pretty old for someone who was born yesterday. Oh. I'm going to give you a good smack. <laughs> you just please make her get out. Uh. Lord! Here. Oh, come, come on, I'm 18. You don't own that bathroom. There's other people in this house, Lord. Now, Lord. <laughs> How do I look, Mother? Well, Princess Di. <laughs> you know, if I was you, honey, I'd show more what I got. Maybe something with beads. What I got doesn't need beads. Make sure you get a dinner first. So what is this new job he wants to talk to you about? Is he going to make you a sales girl? I don't know. Well, why couldn't he talk to you about it at the store? How many payments are you behind on the hot water heater? Now listen, I'll mind my hot water. You just mind yours. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Lay off. <gasps> it's him. Mr. Holloway's out front. His car is a block long. Get away from that window. You're naked. Oh, Ma. He's blowing his horn. Go on, go on. It ain't Gabriel. Relax. Oh, my nerves can't take this. Well, what are we waiting for? Sadie, would you be kind enough to answer the door? Oh, I don't know if my union likes me to do this kind of work for free, honey. <laughs> Is he coming in? Now, don't stand up when I introduce you. Come on in. The door's open. Just follow me. Good evening, Mr. Holloway. Mother, this is Mr. Holloway. My mother, Mrs. Finney. Well, how'd you do, Mr. Holloway? Pleasure. Oh, he's a few. Oh, how sweet. Thank you. And you've met Miss Dugan. Mm. She means me. <laughs> he never knew I got a last name. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like a beer, Mr. Holloway? Uh, no, we gotta get going. I, I made Why a don't reservation. You just wait and sit down a minute. I'll be right out. Oh, well, uh, sit down. Oh, thank you. Sure you wouldn't like a beer? No, thanks. Oh, here, I can take it. here you <laughs> Well. <laughs> Mighty cold for this time of year, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, it'll snow before you know it. Yeah. So, um, how's things in retail? Fine. Fine, yeah. Oh, I saw that special in the papers on those little imported radios. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ma Finney here, we both bought one. That's nice. trains, Mr. Holloway. <laughs> I thought it was an earthquake. <laughs> well, it acts like one. <laughs> My radio don't work. It hasn't since I got it home. Well, I ain't the complaint department. I'm just making conversation. I'm uh, very sorry. Yeah, that's what the guy said when I brought it back. But sorry, ain't $14.95 in the bank. Uh, are you sure you won't have a beer, Mr. Holloway? Uh, no beer. Well, how would you like a nice cold glass of water? I hate water. Here you go, Sam. That's for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Well, 
You like it here? Food okay? I've read about this restaurant in magazines. I've never been, of course. Well, now you know you like it. You can give a hint to your boyfriend. He can bring you here. What did you say this was called again? Creme de menthe. When I think of all the things you know, things I've never even heard of. Well, I've been around a little longer, you know. I'm an old man, Laura May. I don't think a man has anything worth saying until he's past 40. And your boyfriend, how old is he? I thought we came here to talk about my job at the store. Well, you're so pretty. I bet you got a thousand guys online waiting for you. I'm an old-fashioned girl. I don't discuss my private life with anyone, Mr. Holloway. Porter. Porter. Porter? Oh, hello, George. Well, I thought it was you. So damn dark here. Don't get up. What, are you finishing or starting? No, we're finished. Do I ask you to sit down? Well, I'm not here alone. Uh, Freed and Addie are... Addie's here with you? Yeah, I wanted to go to Mallory's. They have electricity there. <laughs> was it our idea to come here? Addie's? May I have a cigarette, please? Uh, sorry, I don't smoke. George Phipps. Oh. That's Miss Finney. How do you do? Well, uh, stop by the table before you leave. I'll uh, leave a trail of breadcrumbs. <laughs> he seems nice. School teacher doesn't have a dime. It's getting late. I think we should go home. Aren't we going to stop by your friend's table? I said it's getting late. Uh, look, it's uh, not so late after all. We haven't talked business. Why don't we go to my place? We can talk right here. Okay. Now, you had those in the restaurant when you asked George for a cigarette, didn't you? I guess I just wasn't thinking. Uh, a smart girl like you shouldn't be in the stock room. I know. What do you know? You're just a kid. I have very definite ideas about some things. Oh, yeah? Well, with a smile like that, you should be up front. Which department? Doesn't matter. You just sell the customer what he wants. Maybe he doesn't know what he wants. Oh, he knows what he wants, or he wouldn't be there. Maybe he just came to look. Nobody likes to go home empty-handed. What if it's something we don't sell? If we sell it or we wouldn't be advertising it. We're not. The customer made a mistake. No, he didn't. Customer's always right. I told you I have very definite ideas about some things. All right. Good night, lady. I had a very nice time tonight, Mr. Holloway. for buying the expensive stuff. Dinner was wonderful. Thank you for a lovely evening.
Yes. How about tomorrow? Half past seven. There's a time when others make decisions for you. This one. Later on, you make your own decisions. Now, many of you are being asked to make an important one. If you don't choose a long-distance company, one will be chosen for you. And it might not be the right one for you. So if the AT&T services you've always counted on are important to you, be sure to mail in the ballot you'll be receiving. This one, please. There's one way to be sure the right choice is made. Make it yourself. AT&T, the right choice. Many years ago, when the Earth was being formed, it gave something special to Colombia. It gave us rich volcanic soil, which brings a special richness to our coffee. Here, men like Juan Valdez pick the coffee bean by bean and protect its special richness. There is no other coffee like our 100% Colombian. And when we put these words on the package, it is for you to enjoy the richest coffee in the world. This Christmas, give something kids love. McDonald's gift certificates, just 50 cents each or 10 for $5. It is a Sunday. It's a good time for the greatest. Don't say thank you. Oh, McDonald's. I forgot. I forgot. I'd heard that hospitals used Tylenol, but it wasn't until I was in the hospital with my first baby that I began to trust it for myself. When I needed a pain reliever, they brought me Tylenol. It really helped, and it never bothered my stomach the way aspirin sometimes did. Then I heard that Tylenol is the pain reliever hospitals use most, more than aspirin or any other type of pain reliever. Now that I know how much hospitals trust Tylenol, I wouldn't use anything else. Trust Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Friday, join the kids from The Cosby Show. Punky Brewster, Silver Spoons, and Give Me a Break on an all-new holiday treat when Andy Williams and the NBC Kids search for Santa. Then, Mr. T, Emmanuel Lewis, and Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner bring holiday cheer in a Christmas dream. Friday. Sunday. The joy and happiness of Christmas with that special Disney touch. It's Mickey's Christmas Carol Sunday. is the most beautiful house I've ever seen. It has everything in it. You want it? I got it. I didn't know you liked books. They go with the couch. Sit down. Carl will be serving dinner in half an hour. Aren't we going out? Well, we've eaten in every restaurant between here and Tijuana. We've been to the movies. We've been to clubs. We've been bowling. We've been every place but my place. Now we're here. We're going to stay here. We've even been to bingo with your mother. She's very beautiful. Oh, yeah, your mother's okay. Your ex-wife, isn't this her picture? I wouldn't have her fingerprints in this house. Who is she, then? She looks like royalty or something. A friend. It's Addie Ross, isn't it? I wondered what she looked like. Oh, now you know. Drink up. If she's a friend, how come she's face down in the drawer? Human. Please don't. What am I out with, Doris Day here? How much longer is this going to go on? Now, let's have another excuse. I don't need an excuse. I told you I have very definite ideas about some things. You haven't got any ideas. You have an act that's over 100 years old. Give a little, but promise a lot. Just so far, but no further. 
a lot of names for this act of yours. Some of them, not so nice. I've been getting good reports on you, Miss Finney. I think you have a real future at Holloway's. Let's go out to dinner and discuss your career. There's a new act for you. It has a beard a mile long. I didn't ask you out. You asked me out. The stock rooms are full of girls, aren't they? Not like you. Damn straight they're not like me. They don't know what they want. Name it. Not a $4 a week raise. I don't want a new car, a fur coat, a trip to Hawaii, or a diamond as big as the Ritz. You don't carry what I want in any of your five big stores, Mr. Holloway. Oh, you know how I feel about you. How? I've been married once. I stink at it. Stink at something, you leave it alone. That's the rule. You would never break a rule? No. Nope. Not even for Addie Ross? What do you know? I was shooting in the dark. I want to go home. Where's my coat? I'll call your cab. I'll walk. Where's my coat? I said I'll call your cab. I can't afford a cab. I'm out of work. Oh, come on. I'm not going to fire you. I quit. Why? What for? None of the others quit. Why should I? Is that it? Well, it's uh, too long a walk. I'll give you a ride home. It is over, starting now. Don't lie awake nights trying to figure it out, Porter. It's just a new twist in the old act. Extra for working New Year's Eve? I'm not working for Rita Phipps tonight. I'm on loan. I hate this dress. The what are you, a garden high. rake? <laughs> I'm a star, honey. <laughs> you remember, like MGM used to loan Clark Apel out to RKO for a picture? Well, the Phipps are loaning me to Ross. Addie Ross is having a party? Why can't I wear your black dress? Hold still or I'll sew your knees together. <gasps> I hear they do that in China till a girl is 18. It's not like you got some place to wear it. Would well, you just shut up and hold yeah, still? Laura oh, May, just hurry right. up, OK? You want to do it yourself? Laura May, why don't you leave her alone? Can't we have some peace around here even on New Year's Eve? Oh, uh, you got that all wrong, honey. You're getting it mixed up with the Christmas Eve. New Year's Eve is when people go back to killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, I got to go to work. Well, Happy New Year, kids. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, honey. Mazel tov. <laughs> Ma! Laura May is being selfish. I want to wear her black dress and she won't let me. Well, why don't you let her? Ma! Well, it ain't like you got some place to go tonight. She could have been going to a party at Mrs. Ross's house. I'll bet Porter Holloway's gonna be there. Oh, Lord. Get down there and pick up that man. I didn't do it! Oh, here. Now get off my back. Earrings? Top left drawer. Woo! Ma, unbutton me. Unbutton me, okie doke. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, Lord. Hello, May. Hi, Nikki. Come on in. Floor show in five minutes. Sit down. What's she going on tonight? Lorme. Is Finney at home? Yes, sir, Mr. Holloway. She's just getting ready. She should be out in a couple minutes. Do I know you? I work at Holloway's. Main Street Branch. Uh-huh. Shipping department. Uh, are you here to take Miss Finney out? Yes, sir. Well, you tell her I was by. Yes, sir. Happy New Year, sir. Laura May? Who 
What's that young man in there? Nicky Fletcher. You known him long? Long enough. Where's he taking you? Nicky and I thought we'd stay in tonight. <laughs> You're beautiful. Thank you. Now get dressed. We're going to Addie Ross's party. No. Damn you, Laura May. Probably. Now you told me not to lie awake. For the last couple of weeks, that's all I've been doing. I've been lying awake, wondering where you are, who you're with, if he's touching you, where he's touching you. You'll be late for the party. Now this is all a game, isn't it? You walk away, you quit your job. That's right, it's all a game and I'm a big act. Well, now the show's over, so get out of here. And let go of my arm. Who the hell do you think you are? What are you trying to do to me? I want to be with you, don't you understand that? You want. I know what you want. And you always get it, don't you? You're a big shot with a big house and a big car, fancy clothes, fancy friends, and now you want me. And you won't quit until you get me, if I let you. And yeah, and you're a smart lady who wants a big house, a big car, and fancy clothes, and fancy friends, and you won't quit until you get it, if I let you. It's cold. I'm gonna let you. You hear me? I want to marry you. Who knows? Maybe it'll work. At least we'll be going in with our eyes wide open. No hearts and flowers. And even trade. Everything on the table. How about it? Thanks for nothing. Now, is that a yes or a no? Through the centuries, a wine has evolved with a unique taste, the taste of selected European vinifera grapes. A taste so incredibly delicious it wins awards year after year. A taste that has won the hearts of more people than any other imported wine in history. Riuniti on ice. So nice. Introducing Riuniti Spumante, a superb sparkling wine from Italy. Riuniti Spumante. More taste than champagne. If you take the Somerset Road all the way out to Mangrove Bay, you'll find a very special place. Captain John's Boatyard, one of the only places in Bermuda you can rent a boat and a motor and spend the day out over the coral looking for fish or out on the flats just looking. But remember two things. Bring some sandwiches and your visa card. Because Captain John doesn't sell food and he doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. It fits. No nonsense patios. The first patios with 16 point contouring shapes itself perfectly from your ankle all the way to your waist. It fits you like no other patios around. And that's no nonsense. New no nonsense light support. It not only invigorates, but with tapered support styling, it's our most comfortable light support ever. No nonsense light support because you never get tired of feeling good. And that's no nonsense. In Greece, gifts are exchanged on St. Basil's Day. In Venezuela, on the Feast of the Epiphany. In fact, the world has almost as many days for giving as there are gifts. Yet millions of people give the same thing. A pulsar. The fine watch whose extraordinary appeal makes pulsar as perfect for Christmas as it is for Kakumisak. Pulsar. The world knows a great watch when it sees one. NBC Monday Night at the Movies will continue following these messages. Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks. And I'm Lee Merriweather, inviting you to the Hollywood Christmas Parade. There'll be bands and floats and lots of your favorite stars, including this year's Grand Marshal William Shatner. And Santa Claus. The 1985, 1985 Hollywood Christmas Parade. Hollywood Christmas Parade, free Sunday afternoon on TV5. The thing about my mother is... She just knew we had it in us to do something with our lives. She was so sure. Well, after a while, we got to feeling that way, too. 
I can hear your warm voice call As if no time has passed at all I feel your loving arms around me To catch me when I fall Even though I lost my way Hey, I never want to know You were there for me when I struck out And when I made it home Good evening, everyone. I'm Brenda Wood with an Action News update. The Williams-Sonoma plant in southeast Memphis won approval today to expand its operations here. Seventy-five new jobs will be created when an addition to the existing building is completed in about eight months. Williams-Sonoma manufactures mail-order cookware. And for the first time, the Memphis School Board heard strong comment tonight in favor of a family life curriculum in the city schools. Board approval could put the new instruction in the schools by next year. We'll have more news, sports and weather coming up at 10. We hope you join us. Welcome to Christmas at Dreyfus, where you can buy this lady's 11 diamond cluster for only $199. Meet Dreyfus, where diamonds. It's Love on the Rocks, weekdays at 4 on Divorce Court. With A Letter to Three Wives, starring Ben Kazara, Michael Gross, and Charles Frank. I wish this boat would keep on going and never dock. to wake up, kid. The party's over. Dad, I'd like to get out of here. Rita, it's just a block. I'd like to get my land legs. It's just fine, Carl. Is Mr. Holloway at home? I don't believe so. Your mother is in the library. Oh, sitting in funny. I'll tell you when it's funny. The side clothes, name something people take off when they go to bed. Here we go. Make up that you, sweetheart, huh? You want to see the shower? Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh, 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 yummy, yummy. Oh,
puts me on your head list? You were wearing your good clothes. Either I'm feeding the twins and you're answering your own phone. Or I'm answering your phone and someone else is shoveling banana rice pudding. Sorry, Sadie. Who is it? His Majesty, the Prince of Prime Time. Tell him I'm not home. And that I'll have to call him back. Go ahead, take the call. I'm just gonna wait. It's been waiting through six innings, a roundup, two hot dogs apiece, and all seven verses of Home on the Range. Where did you go this morning? What is it? I'm so happy to see you. Oh, take it easy, Rhea. I was on campus. We started casting today. I'm directing summer theater. <laughs> oh, Kleenex. Oh. When did you get the job? On my birthday. I was going to tell you, and then, and then we had the, the blow-off, and then... Oh, I don't know. It doesn't pay, Ray. Don't look at me. We're starting out with 12 nights. If music be the food of love, play on. Very good. It was Addie's birthday card. Yeah, Addie's on the arts committee. She helped raise money for the program. She knew all about it. I know I look terrible. But could you kiss me anyway? <laughs> Call His Majesty back. He can wait. Tonight. Where's Porter? He's late. Come on. Oh, they're terrible, these fellas. Come on, you great big bum. Do something. At referee, I... Barbara May! Porter is not late. He's just not coming home. Well, what do you mean? What happened? Did he... Did he have an accident? He fell in love. The doctors don't hold out much hope for recovery. Come on, quit with the jokes. Porter's run off with Addie Ross. Says who? Oh, Ma. She's got style. You can't buy it. You can't borrow it. You gotta be born with it. Or run off with somebody who's got it. He's always been in love with her. Laura May, he didn't marry her. He married you. He made an even trade. The only time I ever heard Porter mention love is when the judge said, repeat after me. What about you? I've got some pride. A little too much is my guess. Well, nobody's asking you to guess. Now it's over, it's finished, I've told you, so let's forget it. If I want advice, I'll write to Dear Abby. Yeah, maybe she'd tell you to shut your mouth. Well, Laura May, if you was any younger, I'd smack you like I used to. Good evening, Porter. Good evening, Ma. What's the matter, something wrong? You're late. Well, give me a demerit. I thought something might have happened to you. And if it did, what would you do? I don't know. Well, I do. Build a fire in the backyard. Make a pitcher of martinis, sing Dixie, call your lawyer and find out the exact figures. That's not true. Thank you, Lord. After three years of being a devoted wife, finally the payoff. Stop it. Your heart when I came home. I wouldn't say that. Well, what would you say? Just where do you get off talking to me like that? You don't treat me like a wife. It's like I'm part of the inventory. You treat me like a piece of merchandise. Well, show me something besides the price tag. Move it. We're late.
Charlie. You wear one of the world's great originals. Charlie, the original original. Revlon, the wonderful way to say Happy Christmas. Ship to cherche partout Est-ce que tu es Jantou, Jantou, Jantou Jantou, the beautiful fragrance Wear it and be wonderful Jantou from Revlon A Polaroid camera can do something important for you every day We've waited ten years for this Okay, just a little bit That's it, that's it, smile when the moment is right, and there are a lot of right moments in life, isn't it nice to know you have your picture while you're still there? Would you mind taking one of those of us over there? Polaroid Instant Cameras do what no other kind of camera can do. Those who think steak and ale is just great steak, this message... Christmas story from 10 years ago. At that time, my family was still watching a 1955 black and white TV. Well, we all lobbied my fiscally conservative father for a new color set, and he finally broke down three weeks before Christmas and got one. He hid it in the basement, and every night before Christmas, we snuck downstairs and watched it without his knowledge, of course, and all acted very surprised when he popped it out of the box on Christmas morning. No matter what you're watching us on, we hope you have a Merry Christmas. I'm a married man. Well, happy anniversary. Stephen, it's beautiful. An anniversary ring of fine quality diamonds, the gift that says you'd marry her all over again. Six right now to be a part of the fun during New Year's Eve at Overton Square. Join me, Steve Connolly, along with Denise Dubois and Dave Brown for music videos, food, refreshments, and fireworks on the square. The fun starts at 10.30 with proceeds to benefit the Arthritis Foundation and the new Playhouse on the Square. Denise, Dave, and I are making it a New Year's Eve tradition, and we hope you will too. So bring in 1986 with New Year's Eve at Overton Square. Brought to you again by FM 100 and TV5. Good evening, Mrs. Phipps. Good evening. Good evening, Kate. Kate, would you bring in the hors d'oeuvres? Hiya, darling. Is everything all right, then? Everything's fine. Do you like the dress? What becomes a legend most? <laughs> Addie Ross wore the same dress to the Hanleys last month. But I think it looks better on me. Where's Brad? He's not here. Where is he? Maybe it's none of our business, dear. <laughs> That's right. It's not your business. It's Brad's. Business, I mean. He had to stay over in San Carlos. You spoke to him? There was a message when I got home. His secretary left it. At least Kate thought it was his secretary. The woman didn't leave a name. Just the message. Who should we tell us? Addie Ross, I think. She's moved east, you know. Bon voyage, Addie. Moved east? You don't mean permanently. Rita didn't tell you? Oh, come on, Eddie. Wouldn't just take off without saying goodbye. Brad know about it? Oh, about it. We don't have to go to the club. What? I want to go. Deborah. You ready? I'll just be a minute. Deborah. Don't leave me in the dark. I'll only bungle and say the wrong thing. What's going on? Brad's run away with Addie Ross. time here. Drink. I fell flat on my face and got sick all over my shoes. 
wanted to turn around and go home. Drink. Ready? We have another. Now this is my home. That huge old house. I never thought I'd get used to such a place. It's night. Coming down the stairs. I realized I love it. The garden. The window seat where Laura May and I have coffee sometimes. I belong here, and I didn't even know it. I was so busy trying. I'm gonna miss everything. Why? You going someplace? Back to Mill Creek, I guess. Oh, that's good. Brad likes to ski. Thank you, Vince. Why didn't you ask Deborah to dance? I'm a lousy dancer. Ask my wife. Please, don't fight. How would your wife know? When was the last time you danced with her? Well, she didn't marry me for my dancing. She married me for an annuity. Sure is taking a long time to collect. Stop it, Laura May. Why don't you tell them how you really Honey, feel? Honey, don't get upset. I'm not upset. I just don't want them to fight. It's so dumb. How about a dance? I'm sorry, Laura May. I'm sorry for her. I'm sorry. I thought it would be all right to come, but it's not. I'm... I'm just ruining the evening. No, you're not. You and Laura May can't even look me in the eye. You feel so sorry for me. George and Porter must be wondering what's going on. I know. Well, then. My husband's run away with Addie Ross. It wasn't as hard as I thought. I'm awfully tired. I'd better be getting cold. Yeah. Let her go. Sit down. You're drunk. Now, everybody stay out of this. It's between uh, Deborah and me. Now, you listen to me because I know what I'm talking about. A man can uh, think about running off. You know, he can even pack a bag. Uh, take a plane. Then maybe something stops him. It's like he's uh, paralyzed down to his feet. And uh, he can't go any more than he could jump off a roof. Addy wrote a letter. Do I have to spell it out for you? I'm the one, not Brad. He didn't run off. But you're here. I can change his mind. Well, now you heard it from the witnesses. Get yourself a good lawyer. Believe me for every cent I got. to do that. She found out in the morning. Maybe he was thinking she'd have a rough night. I'll take that dance now. Rita doesn't matter. I'll quit if you will. Smoking's a lousy habit. Didn't you hear what I said in there? You always talk a lot of garbage when you're like that. Guess I've just stopped listening. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a good laugh. I'm on my way to the airport. And I pull over for gas, I fill up. I get back on the freeway. After a couple of miles, I realize I'm not going to the airport. 
I'm heading in the other direction. Say it. All right. I'll say it first. I love you. I wish you'd wake up one morning busted flat so I could prove to you how much. Say it, damn you. wash over you like a slow, warm breeze. As thoughts of rich, creamy General Foods International coffees fill your head. Sugar-free Swiss mocha. Luxurious coffee with a sumptuous flavor of chocolate. And now the delicious reward. And only 30 calories. Now that's something to celebrate. Sugar-free General Foods International coffees with 100% NutraSweet. Instead of Tylenol, I take three. Anison 3, same aspirin-free medicine, but now Anison 3 has a thin protective coating. In a national survey, people making a choice preferred it 2 to 1 over uncoated Tylenol tablets for easier swallowing. Same aspirin-free medicine as uncoated Tylenol tablets, but Anison 3 adds something extra. A protective coating preferred 2 to 1 for easier swallowing. Aspirin-free Anison 3 with a protective coating. Now new coated caplets too. Anison 3. <laughs> AT&T's Reach Out America plan is a lot of talk. She's not running marathons, but she's getting there. Yeah, and guess where we found him? An hour of long-distance calls across the U.S. weekends and nights cost just $9.45. Additional hours are even less. <laughs> Amy was the only peanut who had a line. When you get an hour of calls across the U.S. for just $9.45, that is a lot of talk. Reach Out America. Another reason AT&T is the right choice. Later tonight, it's the best of Carson when Johnny welcomes the King Sisters. Then on Late Night with David Letterman, David laughs it up with comedian George Wallace. I'm Tom Brokaw. Tomorrow on NBC Nightly News, high insurance premiums are driving midwives out of business. What's being done to protect this important maternity option? She woke from a coma, and 20 years of her life had vanished. Everything was taken away from me. Her sister married the man she loved. I got your husband. It's a lifetime ago. I still love you. Having lost everything, will she have the courage to live again? Elizabeth Montgomery stars in a world movie premiere between Darkness and Dawn next Monday. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Burke. And I'm Brenda Wood. Action News 5 is coming up next. 
A Memphis meatpacking firm will do some trimming of its workforce. And the Industrial Development Board gives an okay for expansion of jobs for another area firm. I'm Dick Williams for Dave Brown. The possibility of snow returns to the forecast. And Memphis State gets ready for a big one. Jack Eaton will have sports and all the sporting news coming next. nothing like special holiday cooking. Now here's something from the folks who are cooking up a whole batch of holiday specials right in your own neighborhood. Happy Holidays from Big Star. What's this? It sure is an our macaroni and cheese. Presenting Velveeta Shells and Cheese Dinners. Why did mommy switch? Velveeta shells and cheese dinners taste creamier because we start with creamy Velveeta cheese sauce, not a powder. We liked our old macaroni and cheese. With pasta shells that hold on to that creamy Velveeta. This tastes creamier than our old macaroni and cheese. I hope you learned your lesson. Velveeta shells and cheese dinners taste creamier than the rest because it's Velveeta. See, the lot of entertainment come and go in Memphis, but some of the best is here to stay. Memphis Cablevision, the only place you'll catch B-E-T. Black Entertainment Television brings you jazz, gospel, and video soul. Speaking of soul, Stephanie Williams helps you keep it together with body and soul. Nipsey Russell's juvenile jury proves the best comedy is from the mouths of babes. And B-E-T has black college sports covered. Memphis Cablevision brings entertainment on home. Test of Trivia, weekdays at 4.30 on Jeopardy. Now, live, the number one news. 